Hello, John from Bang & Olsen in Manchester. Let me just read this for you. BLAB 90 has been designed from the outset to deliver an unparalleled audio performance. Measured directly in front of the loudspeaker, it has a frequency range that exceeds the limits of human hearing at normal listening levels. BLAB 90 is also able to cleanly deliver audio at peak levels at or exceeding the upper limits of comfort for humans. That's right, I have been itching for this moment. That sums it up. Let's get on with it. So, BioLab 90. This was the 90th anniversary Bang & Olufsen loudspeaker and it is the best and most complicated loudspeaker that Bang & Olufsen have ever made. Now, the first thing you notice about them is the size. They are big. They are big and they have to be big for reasons I will go into later. But their design is meant to make them look like a piece of furniture in true Bang & Olufsen style. Gorgeous lines, the shape is intriguing. They're, they're just unusual, I suppose you could say, but in a good way. I mean, some people will hate them because they are big and a bit odd. I personally adore them. I think they're absolutely stunning. Now, these ones are the silver, obviously, with the uh, oak panels. That's the colour that they were released in. I'll put a link in the description for the, um, the the tool online so you can see all the different colour combinations should you be lucky enough to be able to buy a pair of these. Now, these are top-end Bang & Olufsen speakers, so, of course, they come with a price tag. Uh, around £60,000 or so, depending on which options you have. You could spend more with the different colours or the different finishes. And I know what some of you are saying, oh, that's ridiculous, why would you pay that for speakers? Let me tell you. These are magnificent. These are Bang & Olufsen saying, with the technology and the knowledge that we've gained, look what we can achieve. These are a benchmark speaker. They're very, very special. Right, so let's take a quick peek under those sumptuous covers. So we have, are you ready? There's three. There are seven in total one-inch tweeters. Each has its own ice power 300 watt digital amplifier. There are seven four-inch mid-range drivers. Again, each with their own 300 watt ice power digital amplifier. You have three, one, two, and three at the back, 10-inch base units, each with their own Class D 1000 watt amplifier. And right at the front, there is a 13-inch base unit, again, with a 1,000-watt Class D digital amplifier. Okay, so they cost a lot of money. You've got 18 drive units and 18 power amplifiers and mind-bending processing and sound engineering. So what's the point of it? Well, the main drawback of listening to, say, generic speakers so it's, let's say you've got a high-end audio system or even a budget audio system. The problem is with normal speakers, they fire into the room and the sound from the speaker will travel to you and hit your ears. But also the sound will travel away from the speaker and it will bounce from the walls, the floor and the ceilings and the back wall. So all those little sounds, all those different frequencies that are, that are rebounding off the walls reach your ears at ever so slightly different times. That one adjusts the stereo image, so it, it compresses the stereo image because you are hearing the room as well as the speakers. And it also changes the sound, so bass frequencies, obviously if you put a speaker anywhere near a corner or a wall, that changes the bass response. You will have parts of the room where the bass is louder at certain frequencies, and you'll have parts where bass at certain frequencies is much quieter or non-existent and these are peaks and troughs in the room. Um, the only way to overcome these things traditionally is to either use acoustic treatments like bass traps in corners, uh, acoustic 
fabric or pads, these reflective pads that go on the walls so, so that the sound that reflects from them is dispersed before it hits your ears. And you get many, many, in particular, the AVRs, the home cinema um, receivers, that come with a microphone setup. They will measure the room, they'll measure the acoustic response from the speakers, and they will use an equaliser to either boost or attenuate the different frequencies to try and compensate for the room, which can be very effective, but it's not perfect. So that's where the Biolab 90's active room compensation and beam width control come into play. So the active noise compensation uses all of these additional drivers and all that extra power to eliminate those reflections. So if you're not hearing your room, you are just left with the speakers and the music. So that massively improves the stereo imaging and it smooths out the frequency curve it's almost perfectly. Uh, I'm not even, not even exaggerating. I've never heard such perfect response right from 16 hertz all the way up to way past 20 kilohertz. Such a smooth, perfect frequency response, completely effortlessly. Unbelievable. So this is achieved by taking precise measurements from your listening position, particularly at ear level around your head, so that all those sounds that would normally be reflected are played out of phase by these additional drive units, essentially cancelling them out completely. So that brings us to the beam width control. So there are three settings to this. Narrow is the one you would use if we were sitting here on my own. So I'm sitting here, the sound is calibrated to where my head would normally be in the favourite listening position and the sound is directed directly to me. So that cancels out all of the room reflections. I'll be honest, the speakers just disappear, the room disappears. If you close your eyes, I know that sounds cliche and a bit cheesy, but honestly you close your eyes and you can, you can hear where the instruments and vocalists are you can see exactly how the producer has mixed the track. Uh, you can place the height, not only the height, but the depth and the width of the stereo image. It's, it's quite incredible. So then the next setting is wide. So if you're lucky enough like me to have a mate and you want to spread that experience over a larger area, you can do, so we'd set it to wide and at a slight cost of some of the stereo imaging you get to enjoy that experience over a slightly larger area so you can cover the whole couch or you can set different positions around the room of where you want that sound to be directed to. Isn't that right pal? And the last setting is called Omni. So if stereo imaging isn't important and you just want to fire sound out into the room, maybe you're having a party, then you set it to Omni and they just become big, loud, quite obnoxious speakers and you fill the room with just sound, sound. Have a little dance. There are of course lots of connectivity options uh, if you've already got a high-end audio system with pre-amplifier turntables and uh, anything like that, you can plug straight into these from your preamp. So you've got the XLR connections. I'll have to show you a picture because I'm damned if I'm going to move them by myself. They're 136 kilos each, so uh, I value my health too much to try and move them. So I'll show you a little picture. So there you go, there's the XLR connection. You've got optical in, so you can plug anything in with an optical connection. You've got the proprietary Bang & Olufsen connections like the Powerlink, uh, and you've got uh, Wiser wireless connection if you're using a Bang & Olufsen product. I would perhaps recommend using cabled just to get that extra smidge of quality out of them. I think they deserve it. If you want to connect multiple sources to the BLAB 90s, you can do. You can use your phone or tablet to control the beam width control between narrow, wide and omni and you can also select which inputs you want to play from. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be volume regulated either so if you've got something connected without a volume control you can connect a Bang & Olufsen IR receiver to the speakers and use a Bio Remote 1 to control the volume directly from BioLab 90. 
So, we all have 90s. Yep, not for everybody. I personally can't afford to spend 60 grand on a pair of speakers. Um, but you should listen to them. Come in. Come in and have a listen. I haven't got them for that long, so if you want, if you are anywhere near Manchester, come in and have a chat to me. I'll gladly give you a listen. They're phenomenal. They're the kind of speaker that, this sounds a bit cheesy, but to get in your head. I found myself, the first time I heard them, when I'd set them up, uh, I was at home and I, I found myself in bed thinking about the Beale Lab 90s. Now that might mean that I'm a special breed of weirdo, because that is a bit odd, but I could remember what they sounded like when I was in bed uh, and I was thinking of tracks that I could play on them and they really, they, they get in there. And Jeff Martin, who was our tone meister at Bang & Olufsen, uh, he had a lot to do with the uh, the sound engineering that's gone into these. You, sir, have done an excellent job. I would like to shake your hand. Thank you. Anybody at Bang & Olufsen that had anything to do with these speakers, you did good. Thank you. Now, I always try and be honest in my videos. I've had a little bit of a ticking off before when I've said something's not so good, but... I will always be honest, and I am being honest when I say these are like nothing I've ever heard. I've heard lots of very nice systems. I love the audio file systems with the big racks of amps and the big cables and speakers. I love them, but they're not friendly to a normal living environment. What you've got here is a true audio file setup that you can pop in your living room. And they look fantastic. I mean, look at the design of them. So that's it. I'm going to list some music. I'm going to pop it in some narrow. Sorry, pal, no room for you. Narrow mode all the way, and I'm going to listen to some music. And obviously you can't hear it, because you can't experience B-Lab 90s through my lapel mic. So uh, it's time for you to go. Well, I enjoy a bit of Pink Floyd. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 